hello everybody you're welcome to my channel let's get straight to this okay all right when you're giving something like this this is under indices the first thing you need to do is to look out for the bases and try to put them in the same base that is if you can put all of them in the same base so looking at this now notice that everything here are uh, in base three 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 except this one so i need to put this in base three now how do i do that how do i know if it's even if i can even put it in base three you divide through by three okay just pay attention and say i'm going i'm going to analyze this question that you will understand it very well just follow me to the end okay so i want to know if there is anything normally i know that this is 3 raised power of 3 will give me 27 but assuming you are guessing this is how to be sure about it you divide through by 3 because you've seen everything is in base 3 3 divide 27 will give you what 9 you divide by 3 again 3 divide 9 will give you what we give you 3 you divide by 3 again 3 divided by 3 will give you what 1 you notice that 3 raised to the power of 3 that is 1 2 3 3 times 3 times 3 we also give you 27 okay so that means that 3 raised to the power of 3 will give you 27 so i'm now going to rewrite this and replace this 27 with what 3 raised to the power of 3 so that everything here will be what in base 3 all right let me do that so i'm now going to write this is our solution okay this is our solution so our question will look like this 3 raised to the power of n minus 3 raised to the power of n minus 1 all over 3 raised to the power of 3 times 3 raised to the power of n minus 3 raised to the power of 3. So I'll now replace this 27 with what? 3 raised to the power of 3 times 3 raised to the power of n minus 1. Do you understand? Okay, that is the first thing to do. Now, if you look at this, the next thing we should look at now is the laws of indices that we are going to apply here. So follow me, let me show you the laws of indices that we are going to apply here. Now, the first law of indices that we are going to apply here is the multiplication law. Now, what does the multiplication law state? The multiplication law states that x raised to the power of a times x raised to the power of b. Okay? is the same thing as x raised to the power of a plus b. Now, what does this mean? Let me bring it home. For example... If you have a number, if you have something like 2, let's say 2 raised to the power of 3, and you're multiplying it by 2 raised to the power of anything else, eh, is equal to, you are going to pick one, two, one of these two, you pick one of them. You add the powers, that is going to be 3 plus 4. Do you understand? So that is what this law is all about. Once you have two numbers, and they are in the same base, all you need to do is you pick one of them. If they are multiplying, you know, if they are multiplying and they are in the same base, you pick one of them and you add their powers. Okay? So, that is the first law we are going to look into. Now, the second law that we might look into, which I'm not 100% sure for now, is the division law, which is the opposite of this one. That is what do I mean. If you have x raised to the power of a divided by x, raised to the power of b that what you are going to have is x raised to the power of a minus b so as we you have 2 raised to the power of 3 over 2 raised to the power of 4 that this is same thing as 2 raised to the power of 3 minus 4 okay so that is what the two laws that i know we are going to use here okay so let's go ahead and do that Alright, but if you have followed me to this stage, I know that you understand or you love what I'm doing. Please, it is time for you to click on that subscription button because I would like to miss you in my next class, okay? Click the subscription button and also click on your notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video, alright? Okay, thank you very much. So, this is what we have now. This is what we have. So, three raised to the power of n minus 1 can be analyzed like this so we have 3 raised to the power of n right minus 3 raised to the power of n minus 1 now let us analyze this we have 3 raised to the power of n minus 1 what does this mean using that our multiplication law it is the same you know i said if you have the same thing 
if you have the same thing, you add their basis, right? You add their powers. So it means that three things we are separated here by multiplication sign in the same base. So I'm going to write these three and these three multiplication, okay? Now it means that the first three, the power is n, right? Is n. Now the second three, the power is minus one. Minus one. Do you understand? That means that. You know, when you have minus here, you can equally say that 3n raised power of min, uh, 3 raised power of n minus 1 can be written as 3 raised power of n all over 3 raised to the power of 1, right? Based on what I taught you. This and this are the same thing. They are the same. Because 3 raised power of 1, if you want to remove this division sign now and put multiplication, you will call this 3 raised power of minus 1. That is if you remove the division. So to avoid the confusion, for those that don't really understand it all, just put your multiplication sign, divide the, uh, split the threes, and add your powers, okay? So you are going to do that here, right now. So instead of me to write this 3 raised to the power of n minus 1, I'm going to write what? 3 raised to the power of n times 3 raised to the power of minus 1, because that is what they split it together. They split it. All right, all over. Now we have 3 raised to the power of 3 times 3 raised to the power of n. So we have 3 raised to the power of 3 times 3 raised to the power of n. Okay? Minus. Here we have 3 raised to the power of 3 times 3 raised to the power of n minus 1. 3 raised to the power of 3 times. Now we have 3 raised to the power of n minus 1. Okay? Then, as usual, we are going to split this to what? 3 raised to the power of n times 3 raised to the power of minus 1. So, I believe you understood how I did this. 3 raised to the power of n times 3 raised to the power of minus 1. Just like the same way I had to split this one. Okay? Alright. Now, what do we do now? If you look at this top, you have 3 raised to the power of n minus what? 3 raised to the power of n times 3 raised to the power of minus 1. All over. Okay. Let me just do this. Okay. Let me continue. So, for this, you have what? 3 raised to the power of... We are going to take 1, 3 from here. And we are going to add the powers to be 3 plus n, right? Because they are multiplying and they are of the same base using the multiplication law. Just stick with me so that you see how I'm going to get the final result. Now, minus 3 raised to the power of 3. I want to bring these two together. If, if I bring them together, I'm going to take 1, 3, right? And I'm going to add their powers. 3 plus n, okay? Times 3 raised to the power of minus 1. Now, I know you'll be wondering why. I've looked at the numerator. I noticed I have 3 raised to the power of n. Okay? And I have another 3 raised to the power of n here. That is why I had to split them. So that I will have another 3 raised to the power of n here. So that I can factorize them out. Then I looked at the denominator. I saw 3 raised to the power of n times 3 raised, 3 raised to the power of 3 times 3 raised to the power of n. And I also saw 3 raised to the power of 3 times 3 raised to the power of n. So I needed to factorize them out. Okay, and the only way to do that is to combine their powers and combine their powers. That is the only way I'm going to bring the two together. So that if I factorize them out, I'm going to get something. Okay, so let's continue. <laughs> okay, then if we should factorize it out here, we are going to have 3 raised power of n, okay, into, if 3 raised power of n is divided by this 3 raised power of n, you're going to have 1, right? So you have 1 minus if 3 raised to the power of n times 3 raised to the power of minus 1 is divided by 3 raised to the power of n, this we cancel this. You are left with only what? 3 raised to the power of minus 1. 3 raised to the power of minus 1. All over. For this one, I want to factorize out 3 raised to the power of 3 plus n because that is what they have in common. Okay? 3 raised to the power of 3 plus n, 3 raised to the power of 3 plus n. So I'm going to factorize it out. 3 raised to the power of 3 plus n. I will open my brackets. If this 3 raised to the power of 3 plus n is divided by 3 raised to the power of 3 plus n, you are going to have 1, right? Minus, if this 3 raised to the power of 3 plus n times 3 raised to the power of minus 1 is divided by this, notice that this we cancel this, you are left with only what? 3 raised to the power of what? Minus 1. Okay, I you see what I'm seeing. Okay, just look at them very well. You notice that we have 1 minus 3 raised to the power of minus 1. 1 minus 3 raised to the power of minus 1 in the bracket. So what do we do? It means they can be cancelled out. Because what we have here is what? With multiplication. So this can cancel this. So we are now left with what? 3 raised to the power of n over 3 raised to the power of 3 plus what? n. Okay? 
Now, this is equal to, this is where we apply our division law. Our division law, because we have the same base. And this raised power of what? N and 3 plus N. What do we do? We subtract their powers. We pick one 3 and we subtract their powers. So we are going to write 3 raised power of N minus. We have what? 3 plus N at the denominator. But I'm going to put this 3 plus N in the bracket because I am having minus sign here. This negative sign here is going to affect everything here. So that's why I had to put it in bracket. If this is plus, I wouldn't have changed, I wouldn't have put it in brackets at all. Okay, now see how it's going to affect it now. This is equal to 3 raised to the power of n minus, minus times 3 will give us minus 3, minus times plus n will give us minus n. Can you see that? Just stick with me and see how we are going to get the final result. Now this is equal to n minus n will give us 0, right? So you notice that everything here is, is remaining what? 3 raised to the power of minus 3. Now, what is 3 raised to the power of minus 3? It is the same thing as 1 over 3 raised to the power of 3. That is, if I want to remove this negative sign, it's going to be 1 over 3 raised to the power of 3. Now, what is 3 raised to the power of 3? Is what? This is the same thing as 1 over 3 times 3 times 3, right? Which is sent as 1 divided by 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is what? 27. And this becomes our answer. Thank you for watching. Bye.